Hey, Star Wars fans and Rule the Galaxy fans. It is Joe in the pilot seat one more time. And welcome to episode 159 of the Rule the Galaxy podcast. Uh, you know what? We, we just hit 150, it feels like, and we're already on pace to get to number 200. So let's see what kind of a big shebang we can do at that number. Uh, but it's a great show tonight. We, we've got uh, some special guests uh one of our regular co-hosts is back on with me who we, we don't haven't been hitting on all cylinders he and i have missed each other some so i'm glad to have that but as always you can follow us at rule the galaxy sw on twitter on instagram rule the galaxy podcast on tiktok just rule the galaxy on facebook and youtube and last but not least go to etsy.com type in rule the galaxy all one word all caps it'll get you if you're watching on youtube right now cool gear with this logo uh, our rule of the galaxy logo on it and uh, we are loving what laura burton is doing with all of our gear thank you for her doing all that but that is our rundown again it's chapter 159 i'll just buzz through our co-host tonight and i'll start with my good friend brent dykeman how you doing brent what is going down <laughs> downtown so yeah i haven't been on with you in a long time a long, long time. <laughs> Isn't that the quote? I but uh, so. no, uh, so just to give some background, it's a different background if you're looking on the YouTubes. Uh, my son is getting an EEG to see if we need to take him off of medicine that he's been having to try to control seizures. Um, so I'm sitting at the Children's Hospital in Indianapolis uh, in the Hotel Riley and uh, just excited to sleep on a hospital bed couch. So yeah, I got that to look forward to. However, yep. because I always like to escape my reality, this is what I'm doing to try to escape the reality of sitting in a uh, hospital room. So, Well, one, we're glad you're with us. Two, hope everything goes well there with Hudson and, and you find out some good news there. How is, um, how is uh, the Garrison Talks podcast uh, going yeah. on? Your so Legion podcast. They've I believe they've dropped three episodes. So yeah, Garrison Talks, which they like to say that they are a uh, Rule of the Galaxy like offshoot. Um, they've put it in their description. Uh, you can find it on Spotify if you're a Star Wars Legion fan. They haven't really, there's a couple different ones they've gone to. If you're an Apple person, I don't think we've made it onto Apple yet. Um, but yeah, they've, dropped, they've knocked out two um, and the, or maybe three um, because the big uh, tabletop board gaming <laughs> convention that is held the national convention that's held here in indianapolis in august uh gen con and there was a tournament where one of our own players finished second in the tournament out of about i want to say 60 players okay um, that played overall throughout the whole weekend so they had a recap show um and all of that so that's awesome well we i will i, I always forget to go check my spotify i listen to everything through apple obviously um, cause it's easy, but I've got Spotify. So I'm going to go and check those out because I, I listened to the first episode that you guys did on, on our show. So mm -hmm. I need to go follow that along and give them, give them some props. So I'm glad that's going well. Just some behind the scenes on that. Right. So we talked Legion and then we talked for about another hour afterwards about star Wars that they just didn't necessarily want to talk about on the, I was like, dude, I should have turned the camera back on because there was some, there were hot takes left and right about the love of the sequel trilogy and about, Oh, it was, it was fantastic. But uh, so there are definitely good Star Wars and big Star Wars fans, as well as fans of war gaming and strategy games. Well, so. I, one of the things I found is um, sometimes the best stuff that you talk about is off off the camera, off the mic. And, and I wish we just would go hot mic right from the beginning to catch it. But 
you never know when somebody's going to drop something. You go, oh, that should not be on a camera or mic. So, um, well, glad to have you back, Brent. We're going to bounce around here real quick to our friend uh, Damon Juan Kenobi. Um, and and Damon has been somebody who uh, our Rule of the Galaxy podcast on social media has interacted with a ton. Uh, we were we were you know so lucky to meet him face to face in Ohio at the Great Ohio Toy Show. That's right. that March. Yeah, I just remember it being very cold. It was very cold. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it was it was snowing. If I'm not mistaken, yes, it was snowing. Yes. Um, yeah, so that was great though, and I spent way too much money that day. So, um, but you know, it's just good. Uh, you know, we've had other people who are friends of the show on, but we've been wanting to do this for a while. And actually, D Doc, one of our regular co-hosts, really wanted to be here with you. Um, <laughs> but he's at his brother's wedding going on in lake placid new york right now and um so he's all busy and tied up with family things so he couldn't make it but he definitely wanted to tell uh, have us tell you hi so welcome to the show for the first time how's everything going and and give us you know if you want to give us a rundown of some of the things you do and why why we love following you on twitter go right ahead and do that i'm just a big star wars fan like you guys um but i'm also a lightsaber installer a 3d printer you know hello there uh <laughs> I've really gotten into making Mandalorian helmets. Um, probably last year, I just, on a whim, I, I discovered, found T-Bob through your podcast. And I had this spare helmet sitting around. And I just figured, it's like, hey, do you want an LSU one? I reached out to him. He said, sure. And it set me down this dark path of LSU helmets <laughs> for the past six months. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm also part of a, the Rebel Legion here in Ohio. I do a Jedi. Um, I actually have a troop Saturday morning. So awesome. So it's stuff. very cool. Quick question. Is that three? Because you said you're a 3D printer. Are your yeah. man helmets metallic? I mean, it's probably early to get this conversation going, but are they metallic? <laughs> are they 3D printed parts that you slap together? It's all, it prints as one whole unit, one PLA unit. Uh, oh my gosh. So you're using, you have a big deck. You have a big 3D printer then. Yep. Prints as one unit. Let's make sure we work on our enunciation, Brent. But yes, he has a big deck that he uses for his 3D printing. <laughs> hey, it's, if it, it flicks my bic, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about a big deck. Okay. That's what she said. <laughs> okay. We are getting into it early. All right. Um, well, Damon, we're, we're glad to have you here. We're excited. We're going to be on. We, we are going to bounce around and do some different topics and everything like that. And hopefully before the end of the show, we'll make sure to get you to remind everybody and we'll put it in the show notes how they can reach out to you if they want to get one of those cool kind of personalized mando helmets so uh we'll, we'll remind me to do that and we'll make sure we have that happen last but not least i mean this is a gentleman right here who has been kind enough to just interact with me recently um i i saw on gosh i want to say it was facebook um about the indiana toy and comic expo going on in bloomington indiana and it's going on august 28th uh, Joey's 29th birthday. Do you believe that? I'm old enough to have a 29 year old. Um, but uh, we were excited. And then we talked to a few other people who were like, hey, we're excited. We kind of want to go. And I thought, you know, we've never interacted with, with uh, Billy here, but what a better time two weeks out to talk about the show, talk about his fandom and, and just let everybody know how to go get there, how much it costs, the times, the dates, everything like that. So, Billy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. No worries. No worries. So, the Indiana Toy and Comic Expo, how, how long has that been going on, and how much work is that thing? Um, well, I mean, I can do it in my spare time, which is not very much. Um, it's been going on, uh, well, two years off for COVID. This should have been our 10th show, our 10th year, um, but yeah. So this will be technically year eight. Okay. Um, so yeah, we started in Indianapolis um, at the uh, Caribbean Cove Hotel, if anyone remembers that place. Yeah. Uh, we, we started there. Um, we were expecting a couple hundred people, um, like 600 showed up. Um, so we're like, okay, we need to go big. So we went down to the Wyndham West there over by the old airport. Mm -hmm. um, 
I quickly outgrew that place. And then that was about the time the onslaught of the mega convention hit Indianapolis. Your PopCon and Indiana Comic Con and uh, Awesome Con. And I held, uh, there was a bunch of cons. Um, <laughs> So we decided, like, you know what, we're, we're never going to fight those guys um, on that scale. Um, it's like we, we do something completely different. And so we decided to, to go to Bloomington, um, and that's where we set. Gotcha. And so this coming sort of, uh, August 28th, which is a Sunday, uh, yes. you'll be at the Monroe County Convention Center in Bloomington. It yep. opens at 9 a.m., uh, how, how much does it cost to, to get into the show? Uh, $8. Uh, we actually finally raised it. It was $5 since the inception. Uh, $5. Uh, kids 12 and under free with paid admission. We are actually at $8 this year, unfortunately. We had to uh, up the cost. They, uh, they, they jacked uh, up the tables and a few other little amenities that we have to rent. So um, we had to eventually. Nope. Understood completely. Understood completely. It's it's um, it's part of doing the business. I I was in the baseball industry for fifteen to twenty years, and I was at conventions all the time, whether they were national, regional, local. And gosh, I I, I put a few of these together, and and I just remember going, you know, how am I going to cover the cost of all this? You have to get it somehow. You know, you're either going to get it from the people renting the booths or the people coming in. You know, th there's got to be a way for you to make it to where you're not coming out of pocket, like our friend uh, uh, Michael Havens at the IACCC a few years back, where he was paying out of pocket for that. Um, so, when when you're looking at the ITCE, do you find that it's? Um, I saw you just posted on Facebook or recently posted on Facebook mm -hmm. the vendors that were coming and and who's yes. going to be there. Um, what do you see? People are more into is it? Is it the comics? Is it the artwork? Is it the toys? Uh, you know, what, what, or does it an even mix all the way across the board? It, it's an interesting mix. It's an eclectic mix. Um, we have, um, and me, I should say, cause I, I kind of pick and choose the vendors, uh, just because an app come in, doesn't mean you automatically get a table. Um, I kind of curate, um, how this works as far as like my taste. Um, and then I look at things like if I don't like this, but there's uh, clearly other people will, you know, so I, I take that into consideration. Um, we, we try to keep everything as even as possible. I tend to lean more toward um, like art toys, not so much the stuff you can find at Walmart, but like mm -hmm. the independent toy creators. Um, and that's kind of where I lean and I'm a comic book collector. Um, so we try to, like I said, just kind of keep an, an even mix between everything. So we have something for everybody. There's a Star Wars dealer or Centric, or there's a G.I. Joe dealer. We, we try not to double up and triple up on everything. So everybody can hit all manners of fandom as they walk through. Gotcha. I, I think that's a great thing. Uh, when it comes to the comics, what what's your your favorite comic what's the collection that you go to the most I, i'll be honest um i grew up a, a marvel kid um i found dc when i got older um and then independent really hit big in see i'm 44 so like mid 90s is when like all the good black and white stuff really started firing up mm -hmm. um, and that kind of really hit me right in my teen angst so um <laughs> I, I, I today I, I honestly I don't read very many uh, mainstream as far as like your big two books. I read a lot of more uh, dark horse image um, and then more indie stuff um, along those lines. So gotcha. Uh, favorite comic book of all time will probably end up being Invincible. Uh, I don't even know anything about Invincible. Is that the one that M Nine Shyamalan made into a movie? <laughs> no, that's. Uh, no, that's uh, unbreakable. Sorry, that's unbreakable. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Invincible is recently been on Amazon Prime as a cartoon. Okay. Uh, super ultra violent. <laughs> <laughs> is it more violent than The Boys? Um, mm, that's that's no, no, it's not because the, the boys hate superheroes. 
Mm. Darth Venice hates superheroes. This is a love letter to everything good okay. uh, with of Spider-Man and basically take the, the coolest things of Spider-Man and the coolest things of Superman and then wad it up and throw it into space. And that's kind of invincible. Okay. So it's fun. I'm going to go check that out. I had to write a note to myself because by the end of the show, I'll forget. So I have to constantly write notes here. Um, well, good. Well, I'm, I'm glad. Brent, you know, we've got two guys here who are guests with, with things that you and I, neither one do. We don't run our own shows. We don't make, well, you don't make your own 3D yet, but you, you paint stuff that people make for you on 3D. Uh, any questions for these two to start? But the stuff that I paint is not the size that he prints. He prints <laughs> stuff. I'm I'm doing things that are like an inch and a half tall, yeah, right? Nice. Like things yeah. that you, like as I get older, I'm gonna need magnifying glass, and luckily I haven't needed them yet. So no, um, for the ITC, like I was just curious because you said you curated, um, and you were the one that kind of like just because you apply doesn't mean you're gonna get a table. And I apologize, I have bad connection because I'm using the hospital Wi-Fi. So. I don't know if you've answered this question or not, but like, so what is it? I know comic books was where you, where I came back in at. Are you a figure collector? Are you, um, are you a, are you a Funko pop guy? Like mm. what is it? What is it? What is your collective uh, habit and or obsession? My habit is action figures. Um, a, a Funko pop. Oh God. Okay. So that's, that's a, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that can, roll into a fist fight um there's <laughs> oh there's why <laughs> because honestly there i have a few uh, i'm looking at maybe like 15 over here on a shelf um and they're only of like properties that i can't live without um i there's parts of fun code that i love and there's other parts that i absolutely hate as someone that loves the art toy movement um Guys like uh, Suck Lord and uh, Killer Bootlegs and all these guys that make mashup toys and real vinyl and things like that. I don't, I, I see Funko as kind of like co opting something cool and making it so mainstream. It, it, I don't know. It, I have a love hate relationship with them. So basically, they're the empire uh, of the collecting world, uh. is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I mean, when okay. you reach the when you reach the point to where every office at at, at your local <laughs> work has a a a whatever it is there, it's like, oh look, it's a golden girl, or it's this, uh. or it's that, and 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 that's and that's great. Don't get me wrong, as a toy collector, I understand it, I get it, but it, it's almost come to the point where it's 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 like tchotchke. It, it's mm -hmm. not even like. I don't know. There's moments so I'm like, okay, like, oh, they made my pet monster. That's awesome. Or they made War Duke from Dungeons and Dragons. That's fantastic. Um, and then I see, oh, wow, every single Marvel movie is getting 30 variations mm -hmm. of the same Thor. And, it, and that's where I kind of like, I don't know. I cringe a little bit. But I say that, and I just pre-ordered one this afternoon at lunch. So... <laughs> I well, mean, what can I do? So, I first I'm going to ask Damon. Damon, do you go after the Funko Pops? Um, my daughter is the one who's really into the Funko Pops. We've been uh, desperately trying to track down the Eddie Munson Funko for her. Oh, uh, yeah. But I say that, and I just bought um, the the Thor: Love and Thunder Korg because uh, I love Korg. Okay. So I pick and choose my Funko Pops. I don't really buy a lot of them. So just I've got the, I've got that Eddie Munson setting over here next to Eleven and Ooh. a like. They're gonna be a deal mate on scene. Is there gonna be a deal mate on the podcast tonight? <laughs> oh no no no! I, mine's he, he's opened. I opened him oh. up immediately as soon as I seen he was worth like a hundred bucks. I popped him straight out of the box and threw the box away. Well. Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I don't know if Joe's gonna go this way, but like, so you saw he was worth a hundred bucks, and you popped him out of the box. Does that increase his value or does that decrease his value? It doesn't matter to me because he's never gonna go anywhere until oh, I die. Okay, you know, open, I up, say open everything. I I I I try to, but there's certain things that I can't. I don't know. There's <laughs> well, I that so one. I will tell you, we're, we are going to go down this path because Alfie... You've got a toy guy on. You're going yeah, to go down yeah. this path, Joe. Alfie you know is, that this is not my <laughs> cup of 
cup of tea as well. <laughs> well I'll go down it with you. <laughs> so as we all know, Alfie probably has thousands in his attic of Funko Pops. Tom, <laughs> no, no joke. I mean, tubs and tubs of Funko Pops. Um, and then Tom Line, one of our great listeners, he also has just boxes and boxes of fun po- Funko Pops. I personally have four. Three of them were given to me as gifts, so I can't turn those down, right? Um, the one I bought was uh, Cara Dune at a five below. So for $5, I bought a Cara Dune just because I was like, wow, they don't really make anything more Cara Dune. I might as well have the Cara Dune Funko because I can't find anything else of hers. Um, and so I do have those four. I'm Unless someone gives me a gift, that's I'm not going to go any further on that. But Damon brought up a good point, and 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 so did Billy. The opening, okay? We have on on uh, Rule of the Galaxy, we have been going down the path of opening everything. Now, I just recently, Alfie got this for me, and he found it on clearance, and I said, you know, Jar Jar would make a great character to open. And I know Brent loves Jar Jar, so I figured I'd bring this out right here for our YouTube fans and followers. This actually was a fun one to open and he stands without a stand and and he's he's very you know everything moves very well on him so i didn't used to be an open person i thought gosh we're gonna have to keep all these and make make them pristine and it's gonna be like a museum but i have my first grandchild coming within about two or three weeks and i've decided that stand in the box thing just isn't gonna last so we have been slowly but surely opening everything that we can uh on rule of the galaxy alfie has d doc has so that's uh, billy you obviously are uh damon you are great well, you're gonna Damon's say in the middle of opening one on the youtube channel as we speak as you were talking about it he i he pulled his black series up what which figure do you oh a jawa tika tika yeah oh man you grabbed the tika okay well that's good i'm it's impressive right there to do it live right there on the show. We've got that. Um, I wanted to go. There's a toy store in Columbus called Big Fun, and it's a vintage toy store. And I, I go there all the time. And they seem to have a limitless supply of prequel toys because I always walk away with like two or three to- prequel toys. And I just, I, I, and they're only like five, five dollars. That just talks to the insane saturation of that product 23 years ago that they're mm-hmm. still tons of unopened phantom menace toys that are like five bucks and below and i always grab two or three and i i, I just love getting them out and opening them set them up i really want and i went shopping at a couple places in indianapolis with joe um i like to turn those things into like terrain so like i would love a broken at uh the atte the uh crab legs the eight-legged uh mm-hmm from the prequel so i could destroy that in some way and turn it into like a broken down piece of terrain for my game and the other thing is they've hit it at a couple times but we don't know for sure if they're coming but gungans might be coming to my game so i might be able to be painting up a little inch and a half maybe two inches because they're taller than regular yep. human yep. so they might yeah. like be up in the wookie size but uh so I'm excited if that ever shows up in the game. But so that's my version of toy shopping is I'll go look at the stuff, but I'm like, oh, how can I turn this and how can I destroy it to make it look cool? There's something wrong with that. We each have to have our own little niche with it, right? I mean, I, like I said, so the ones that are behind me that are still in their cases, I'm saving those because when my grandson, when Joey's son shows up in a few years when he's ready to start playing, I'm going to give him that satisfaction of being able to open you know, those characters. I'm just going to be like, hey, grandpa's got these here. Open them, play with them. I'll be like a toy shop to you. So I'm excited about that. That's going to be fun. I think Um, people just assume I'm anti not opening. I don't care if people keep their toys. I know a guy who puts them all on open black series. He has them hanging all over his walls. I'm like, if that's what you like, that's great. I just prefer to open everything and get it out. Because I'm I'm not... I have no interest in ever resell. I buy these because it's fun. I usually try to buy them in stores. I'm not a big online or pre-order guy. I just like finding them, going mm-hmm. through a store, and be like, "Oh, they made they didn't, I didn't even know that one was coming out." And I just grab it if I can. 
Well, well, for Billy and Damon, what are your guys' thoughts on how we're going plasticless, if that's a word? The window. Uh, we're removing the, the window, window the on these yeah. characters. I Look, I am an open person. We're going to open them. But are we sure we're getting what we're paying for? Are we sure it's not damaged? <laughs> where, where do you guys stand on that? We, we did an episode not too long ago about that and kind of broke it all down. I am pro um getting rid of the window um because like 90 percent of what i buy is pre-order or it's uh either pre-ordered through like big bad toy dork side one of those or it's pre-ordered through a local shop i know basically every toy store owner in the state and beyond so for me it's like i'll just pre-order through them uh if i pre-order through target i'm confident now when i go to a store like a resale type shop, which we, we have a few of those here in Indiana. Um, I'm going to really inspect that figure moving forward. Uh, my problem, I think, is is worrying about paint apps because they can get pretty sloppy at times. Mm -hmm. I, do, I, I don't need a, 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 a googly eyed uh, Princess Leia or, you know what I mean? It, uh, <laughs> I'm really, I'm that guy that if I, if there's five of the same figure, I've got all five of them. I'm looking like, oh, I don't like that mustache. Ah, <laughs> uh, that sideburn don't look good. All right. I'm taking her or what, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, I, I'm pro, but toys are made to be open. Those toys aren't made for people like us. That's, yeah. that's kind of was our takeaway from it. Um, the, you know, like I think the collector's market is less than um, like three percent or something of all toys sold. It's minuscule. They don't care about us. We just happen to buy kids' toys. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's really what it breaks down to. Isn't that crazy? We have this discussion probably once a month at least on the show. No, no, about three times a month. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you're on text chains of the show, the rule oh, of the text chain that is true. That's way more. That's it's, like every day. Yes. <laughs> there is a, that is every day. Brent, Brent now that they canceled, uh, now oh. that they came out with the pre-order of Rex that they just canceled. <laughs> so painful. They I saw an Anakin vintage collection in Target today, and it was it was not good looking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't, whoever, this one does not look like, I was like, oh, Anakin, cool, I don't have, I was like, oh, that's, that, I'm, that's going back on the show. <laughs> Good for you. I, I mean, I think Alfie says it all the time. He, he's, well, he's giving up on pre-orders because pre-orders have done nothing but cancel in the past mm -hmm. six months for it, for both he and I. And, and uh, so w he's really like, I'm just going in the wild and what I find, I find um, because it's just, it's too tough. I, you know what? We all need to become better friends with Billy, I think, because we could be running, running a, a system right through him since he's got all the connections. Um, yeah. I also and, run a, I also run an action figure group on Facebook for just people in Indiana. So we help each other out. Well, shout that out right <laughs> now. Yeah, for people say, we got Indiana uh, listeners. What is it? Uh, it's uh, the Indiana Toy Collectors Unite uh, on, on Facebook. Um, you have to answer a couple of questions. You'll get in. Um, we even got like guys from Ohio, Michigan, surrounding area, and um, yeah, we try to help each other out. We I don't allow scalping, um, I don't allow flippers and things like that. If and I, we like we really encourage area area reports. So if something's coming into our area, we kind of all let each other know like, hey, like this transformer, these transformers are going on clearance, or these Star Wars figures hits, or um you know we got a bunch of wrestling collectors like the new AE, AE dub stuff's hitting and, and we, we try to help each other out and meet up and like trade out figures and stuff with each other so um we've been around for a few years and you know we try to help that's a big okay. thing with me like i don't i'll see figures in a store and i'm like oh i have that one's i heard that's rare but i'm not gonna i'll never buy one to resell it i'll just leave it on the shelf hope hope somebody else finds it that's <laughs> looking for it I'm like, I'm like, if I don't, I'm not going to buy something to resell it. We, uh, we, we, I like we, fans uh, like you, but you always hear the ones that go to the Target and buy six, like there's yeah, six on the yeah. shelf and they walk up to the register with six. And then there's complaints that there's nothing on the shelves. I mean, they're Hasbro's getting their money. Like they're not necessarily <laughs> worried about our, like the collector's money because Hasbro's getting their money. 
They oh. bought the six at the recent ma- uh, manufacturer resale price. So usually, are, I get usually those... if I see something, I will get on and start messaging people. Is anybody looking for this? Is anyone looking for this? Yep. Like I'll buy it for you if they don't want to buy it from me. Sometimes we will strategically hide it in another part of the store, <laughs> and I'll be like, "This is where I put it for you. Come get it tomorrow." <laughs> okay. So if you want to know? Okay. We have we have a we have a term for that actually. That's called hillbilly layaway. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that's when you take the action figure and you go hide it over by the paints and you hide it behind something yeah yeah it's called hillbilly layaway that's been yeah i love, I love it I, I love so, it there was a, a couple of years ago i flew to florida and i landed in orlando which is where the disney store when as soon as you get off the airport it's about 7 a.m when i land right so i landed about 7 a.m and i start taking pictures because of the six inch black series um, bad batch figures were mm-hmm. there at wow. Disney and I know these guys are nuts for them. Right. So I took pictures and I showed them and I was like, well, I'm going to be coming back. It was a short trip. I was going to visit my dad on mother's day, right? Uh, dad on mother's day. Cause my mom had just passed. So it was the first mother's day without my mom. So I flew down to hang with him for like two days and flew back. So I'm like, Hey guys, here's what they got. Let me know if you want anything. So then I was like a drug mule because I had like six figures that I had to buy. <laughs> I don't even collect figures, but I know these guys really like them. So I was willing to do it. I was like, hey, just Venmo me eventually. And then I had to like, I had an already stuffed like overnight bag that I was trying to use. And I had to try to figure out how to get these guys in. And God forbid you ruin the packaging when you get them in there. So. <laughs> been there here's what you do you get those <laughs> figures you walk over to the local little fedex or kinko's <laughs> or whatever's in, in in the airport throw them in a box flat ship them they might beat you home that's what i do <laughs> i love it i'm i'm learning all kinds of new things on this show already i mean this is great um so i got a question for damon though real go, quick go right ahead sure go right ahead so a lot of toys talk, right? I'm going to talk about, you mentioned that you're part of the Rebel Alliance and that you're a Jedi. Mm-hmm. So are you a prequel era Jedi? And then if you can talk about how you got into that trooping and how you got it, like what was the pull, all of that big details. Just give me some details on that because I was interested when you said that. Um, I had two um, official costumes. I did a generic Jedi, which is just plain jedi and then a couple of years ago i did a full um detailed episode three obi-wan kenobi costume um and now i'm working on the show kenobi costume maybe mm. growing out Ooh. my mullet in the back here uh i went to, they used to have uh used to be wizard world used to come through columbus and it's i don't i don't think it exists anymore it's probably under a different name now but uh five years ago i went there with a cheap put together Jedi costume. I painted uh, rain boots that were green. I painted them bl- uh, brown, and I had a lightsaber. And I ran into these Star Wars people. I was like, "Who are you guys?" Like, "Oh, we're Rebel Legion." And it was real positive. They were all like complimentary of my crappy costume, but said, "You're not too far away. You just need to get this, this, and this, and you could probably join." And that's, uh, I think, I officially joined three, three years ago, and awesome. have done i don't know countless troops we um so we do i mean if you're familiar with the 501st and the rebel legion 501st is the empire mm-hmm. rebel legion is the good guys and then mando troop. mercs mando mercs yep um and we uh you know we just do charity events sometimes movie premieres um it's you know we're we're officially connected with uh lucasfilm so our costumes have to be have very pinpoint like crls that we have to follow and hit notes on to get approved so you can't so, just come in with your uh your rubber walmart mask and be like i want to be darth vader <laughs> so well. i use the 501st database for my paint jobs so mm-hmm. i wanted to i i have two huh. royal guards right so i yeah. wanted like i wanted to do something different but i also wanted to try to find something that was also somewhat canon so i did one in the traditional red from the empire but then i found that there's a senate guard which yeah, is blue IRG, the royal guard but they're in blue but they have a fedora and i haven't mm-hmm. put the fedora on it right that they have that but then we went to i uh i triple c and the 501st guy there was in like a shadow uh imperial royal guard black with red visor and i just said i said to somebody around me and i'm gonna say to here i gotta buy another set of (laughs) imperial royal guard so i can paint them up like that because they looked awesome 
So yeah, no, I, and so looking at those, looking at that database of the different outfits, it's all about how you go about building it. And they are legit, like you got to do it this and it's got to pass an inspection. Yep. Um, it can be, um, it can be uh, awful. <laughs> I know some people who get sent back countless times and it's just, it's for something so minuscule. It could also depend on who your judge is. Some people will just, going to let certain things like pass but you know it's it's you, you want to have a high quality but you also don't want to gatekeep because mm -hmm. that can be a real negative experience for people if they you know they um, a lot of work into a costume and then they, they get rejected because there's part of a zipper exposed in the back of their boot or something you know so so billy um do you see much as far as cosplay or things like that at your event do people show up in things um, like that or is it more just buyers and sellers oh no no we we actually have the uh the 501st and rebel legion the southern indiana uh groups uh they also we have a droid builder group that comes <sighs> love it. um and uh, they always show up i think every event we've ever had they've been there um yeah they've been really supportive uh we actually have a cosplay contest uh we have it for kids teenagers and adults um so cosplay is encouraged we have a um, an, an event room with a stage and seating and everything. We had that for the, uh, and we also do a custom action figure contest. So um, yeah, we, we, we were really, really big into, into the cosplay uh, side of things. Um, I will say I'm not, but I give it to somebody else and let them run it. Um, I, they kind of have other things to do. Sure. Delegating <laughs> so, uh, is key. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I'm basically, I've got a spot upstairs. I call it the gorilla pos position. And that's where I kind of hide. Um, Cause <laughs> that convention center is two stories and okay. we fill it top and bottom. So yeah, it, um, I'm up top kind of um, watching. <laughs> Damon, it, it's not going to be long before you need to get a booth and have your, uh, your helmets going. So be helmets and your lightsabers. People can uh, buy those off you. Can turn yourself into a vendor at these. I mean, I don't really. I don't really sell lightsabers. I just know people who don't know how to do the electronics, and I'll, gotcha. I'll install it for them. As far as these, like this, I'm actually started looking and researching to do a do a um, a resin mold so I can stop printing them mm -hmm. and start that making them cheaper? that way. Would that be cheaper? Because that's, I know resin can be really expensive. That's still, that's part of the research. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cause I like buying a couple bottles of resin and having a resin printer. Well, you wouldn't, you people. wouldn't print, you'd make one, I'd make one really clean 3d print, sand it down. And then I'd make a, a resin mold, like a physical mold. And then you'd pour a resin in it and make your helmet that way. And so it would be a perfect, perfect every time. I wouldn't have to sand for hours on end each time I print one of these. I, I think that's awesome. And, and I think also what, what we're doing here and what we're discussing is, is huge for me when it comes to Star Wars and Star Wars fans and fandom. Because we, we have a gentleman who he loves the movies, right? He loves the, the, ver the visual side of things in Brent, but he's really hooked on Legion. We, we have a gentleman up here who's part of the 501st and who makes helmets and, and, you know, and, and likes buying the characters in the wild and yep, tearing them right open. And then we have a gentleman down here who runs a show that I know it's not star Wars based, but it, you know, star Wars fans are going to be there. Um, and, and it really rolls into that. So there's, we say it all the time. There's a different entry point and there's a different passion for star Wars with every person out there. And I think that's, what's great. I mean, we can have our differences. We can have our, opinions on certain things in the star wars fandom but i just love that this mix right here i mean i couldn't do any of those things i i'm a consumer that's what i am i'm a consumer and i'm a talker that's that's my star wars fandom right but that to hear you guys in your different levels it just it just makes me happy that that there's a different way for everyone to be involved with it from very minuscule to going way over the top so yeah go ahead brent so I heard you say lightsabers and then I froze up when I asked my question. So thank you for <laughs> answering it. I'll listen to it when we hear it back. Um, but that brings me to my favorite question. <laughs> um, there is a running gag. Uh, it's a shtick that has started because uh, the Molinero family, because they're all like the Molinero mafia of Star Wars fans. Uh, we're talking crap about Count Dooku. 
And somebody said that no one really likes his lightsaber. Why would anybody pick up his lightsaber when we go to, um, when you go to Galaxy's Edge? They have them all laying out in Dooku's. And like, I don't think anybody walked over to Dooku's because who would want Dooku's lightsaber? And then they would, then they started calling him Stumpy because somebody cut his hands off and cut his head off, which then went to talking about an action figure of Dooku with his hands that would be removed. And if you had little kids, would they eat those hands and then talk to the, uh, you'd have to talk to the doctor and be like, Hey, can I get <laughs> back? Cause it, I need it for my figure. Right. Which made me think, and I defended my boy count Dooku, right? I go into this spiel. So the question is, I like that saber and that saber hilt. Like, so is there a saber hilt from the star Wars universe that you gravitate to that you like, which one stands out? So what's your favorite lightsaber hilt? I have to ask the question. My, my personal favorite is probably the um the first w1 the the alec guinness one the uh i have that i have i have all three versions i don't have the, the one for the show is basically just a weathered version of episode three with the episode four emitter so they're just making it so you want to buy another one but i'd probably go with <laughs> with uh, episode four ob1 but i love I love the Count Dooku lightsaber, and I've tried to get one. Um, someone made a, an empty one a few years ago, and it was just crazy expensive. I did not have the money to buy it at the time, so I've always kind of I like to buy them empty so I can put my own stuff in them. Uh, I'm not a big on the, but you know, I could possibly gut one of the Disney ones and do it myself. It's just it's tricky. It's an easy way to ruin a lightsaber when you just start taking it apart. <laughs> above my head uh, how about you billy is there a favorite lightsaber hilt or handle that that you have in the star wars universe my probably my favorite jedi uh kit fistos really i like, I like that one yeah yeah i love when he, somebody my go ahead he, he's my favorite uh, my favorite jedi so that, that guy i just gravitate to i don't know that's absolutely awesome. I think that's the first time on the show we've had Kit Fisto mentioned as his as the hilt that people go to, and that's fine. I mean, I, I think people right. like I, it. Like I said, I don't know if I, I love when people pull out new ones that I haven't heard before. So, like now, now that begs the question and a follow up question: What is it about Kit Fisto? Is it the dreadlocks? Is it the green like <laughs> squid like dreadlocks? What is it? It's it is. I'm a huge HP love. Craft fan and uh, I, I get I get a Cthulhu vibe um, <laughs> uh, from him. But there was an episode of oh um, the the Clone Wars shorts, the 2D animated ones, and I think they were on his planet. And mm -hmm. he took his shirt off, jumped in the water, and he pulls this lightsaber, and it's uh you can see the bubbles coming off of it. And yeah. I was like, okay, I've never seen that before. That's badass. This is a fish. This is a, <laughs> this is a fish Jedi, like Cthulhu type thing. I said, I'm down. This is good. This is my guy. I like him. So uh, that, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad we got that answer right there. Um, you know what? That's going to lead me into, I actually <clears throat> just recently, just to, just to see what people would say, wasn't, I didn't, you know, there was no, you know, rhyme or reason. I just kind of want to get feedback from people. And I asked, if you were looking at your favorite top three characters in Star Wars, and it can be from books, it can be from the animated, the shows, the movies, what would be your top three characters in there? My, mine are a tie between Luke and Obi-Wan at, at number one, and then number three, I guess, would be Ahsoka. So those three are my three. Um, Brent, yours were Yoda, Chewbacca... And I don't know if I'd put this, I mean, because I've read a few since then. Sorry, I've listened to a few. And there's one that comes from the, the old Republic books. Um, it's Darth Malgus. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. it's because yeah. of the Mark Thompson's narration. And he, he sounds like Bane from Batman. He's got <laughs> oh. like that respirator and he's got the... <laughs> And like, there was just something about that, like imposing piece that's like, dude, I kind of like you. That's um, cool. Doesn't Malgus have like that breathing apparatus, yeah. but he has like a, a steel jaw or something? Yeah. I've got something the action like figure like around here somewhere. 
<laughs> yeah, something like that. I mean, but yeah, that's yeah. what it was. And I think that's why they did like, I mean, he made a voice, but then they also put some production behind it to make it sound like it was like, because he was talking through that respirator, but there was just something about that gravel, which I love Bane from that. What is it? The dark Knight rises. I like, he's one of my favorite mm -hmm. characters from that uh, Christian Bale, Batman series. Um, so it's something about that voice that made me. So I would say, I don't know if he'd be top three, but I wanted to make sure I mentioned him as we talk about these, but for yeah. sure Yoda and the, like his philosophies. And then how can you go wrong with a giant walking carpet? Because I'm a giant walking carpet. And I, and I still have this for you. <laughs> yeah. You said I, you were going to drop I, it off. I meant to drop it by and it's been sitting here in my it's desk funny. that uh, I, I owe you this loyalty Chewbacca mug right there. So um, Billy, um, your, your three, favorite and, and kip Bisto can be in that three uh but... yeah he's uh first probably uh plagueis uh okay. is my number one um yeah i uh, Bisto and third i would probably go with like dash rendar nice um that's one i still gotta read that is one because it's not really on audiobook you can't really find it really yeah. easily on audiobook <laughs> um that's one that i still got to get to that everyone says is so good i just i want to get to it but i just it's, haven't met it's it. it's good i mean it's not canon anymore and what he no. did is kind of worthless now but i mean it's i i played him in the like the video games like shatter the empire and i think he's yeah so that i yeah well, i like plagueis isn't canon either and i liked plagueis <laughs> i do too but at the same so, time, I always say this: that day, that book should have been called Darth Sidious, because yeah. two thirds of the book uh, was about yeah. was about Palpatine, and only about a third of the book was about uh, play, uh, Plagueis. Or, yeah, I, I, he's just one of those characters that's always set with me. Is like, okay, basically, he's the start of like I don't know everything in mm -hmm. a way, as far as like the the the, the movies that we see. Mm -hmm. He's he's like the guy, like the. the the rule of two and and all this different stuff that, like he instituted right. and it, it's really hard for me not to believe i know it's kind of fan fiction but like there's a part of me that still believes that Plagueis is palpatine in a way like he just transferred bodies and because he was known to do that and anyway yeah no i got yeah. you i mean it, it goes I, back I to the further back he was probably darth bane bane was he's probably like like yep. if you want to go all the way further back, I'm sure yep. Bane to Xana to like, even though yeah. Drew doesn't say that that's actually what happened, right? Because I think you guys asked them that. We did. But, uh, he said that's not actually what happened. But in my head, my head canon is I don't care what Drew said. It's <laughs> the way you read it and the way it comes across out of the pages is that there was this transference because he <laughs> twinkled, he she started twitching her fingers like like Bane. Sorry. Nope, I got you. Um, Damon, give me your your top three. Uh, Obi Wan Kenobi is my guy. He's number one. Uh, Watto is probably number two. Uh, and then three is uh, it's, a, it's it goes back and forth between someone like I love Dex uh, from Attack of the Clones. Oh, uh, Dex is master. Maybe Cad Bane. But Watto nice. and Obi Wan. Watto is a favorite of mine. I love Watto. So, what was your Speaking thoughts on the depiction of Cad Bane in Boba Fett? I. I I, I don't read a lot about the show, so I don't want to know a lot. So I didn't know he was going to be in there. I thought it was fantastic. Um, I'm kind of hoping he's still alive because there was that red light. <laughs> I, I'd like to see more Cad Bane. I, I, I really, I, I just like that character. It's like a perfect mix of like, I, yeah, old West and uh, Star Wars, spaghetti and Western, yeah. Star Wars, right there. Yeah, that, that that's an awesome character. You know, I. Brent was bringing up that we talked to Drew Carpitian, who wrote, you know, the the Bane trilogy, and and uh, and Revan. Um, believe it or not, I'm I'm Mister. We we talk about it all the time on the show. I'm Mister. Happy go lucky. I want everybody to be good guys, all that stuff. But it's hard for me to not put Bane in my top ten for sure because Bane, that character was awesome. Those books. Once Nick got me reading those books, I was like, holy cow, how did I miss this? And and so good. And uh, you know, Brent, I think we need to have Drew back on for you to just tell him, I don't care what you wrote and what you think, but for me. That's the beauty of when creating art. When you put art out in the world, people get to interpret it how they want to. I agree. I agree. That's good. Um, so <laughs> let me see here real quick. I'll try to make another oh, this this should be an easy one. 
uh, before we close up and before we, you know, give you guys a chance to really tell about, uh, you know, yourselves and how to, how people to track you down your favorite movie from each of the trilogies, your favorite movie from each of the trilogies. So mine was empire strikes back. Then the phantom menace, then the force awakens. Um, Brent, did you have a favorite movie from each of the trilogies? I mean, uh, out of the sequel trilogy, I, it, the Force Awakens just left me with excitement and uh, all the possibilities. And I was, I left that like, this is awesome. It's back. This is, or it, not back, but it's like, all right, I, I, I want to see where they're going with the next ones. So the, for sure, the Force Awakens. My all-time favorite is Empire Strikes Back. And when I was growing up, all my, all the people around me that like Star Wars liked Return of the Jedi with the Ewoks and all that stuff. And it was the final one. But there was something about the Luke, I'm your father and Hoth. And just like the ominous feeling of that one that I've always enjoyed. Um, so that would be the original trilogy. And I mean, as you notice, and if you guys haven't been on the podcast, but I'm more of a sequel trilogy fan than I am a prequel trilogy fan. So it is hard for me to get past Hayden Christensen. But how can you go wrong when you have Yoda fighting Count Dooku? And you have Kit Fisto being dropped off from an LAAT in the Coliseum on Geonosis. So I would say Attack of the Clones is probably okay. my favorite. Um, just And like the CGI with all of the people and him, I don't know, the Caminos at the time were like, oh, the, the little giraffe people. But like, I I've love uh, almost all of the Attack of the Clones. Okay. Billy, how about you? Uh, New Hope. Um, Revenge of the Sith, and probably honestly, people get mad, but uh, Rise of Skywalker. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's no, no, you're you're allowed to you're allowed to do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna let Alfie in just so he can say hi. But he we're gonna finish up here in a few. But Alfie just popped in, so we'll just let him say hi. But uh, Damon, how about you? One from each trilogy. Empire Strikes Back, Phantom Menace, and The Last Jedi. Okay. That's a good mix right there. Um, so, yeah, I just, I, I, was, I was surprised. I got, um, and Alfie's showing up here while, before we close up shop. Um, but uh, the, the feedback, I asked people their three favorite characters, uh, their favorite movie from each of the trilogies, and then I asked people for their favorite books. Because I, I love the books. I, I devour all the, the novels and everything like that. I, Billy, I wish I could keep up with the comics. I, I'm, I sit there and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I can't every day, go, you know, every week go and get this, this, this. I would probably spend my mortgage at the comic book store if I went there every Pretty week. And did that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's when I, I had to remove myself from one thing so I could still keep up with the others, right? So... Hey Alfie, we're we are we're close we're closing things down here uh, w with this episode. But I wanted to let you on and say hey real quick. How you doing? I see Miss Azalea's with you. Oh yeah, we're doing great. Yep. Uh, I, yeah, I, I know you guys are at the end here. I just wanted to jump on real quick and say War Eagle. But <laughs> all right, guys, I gotta go. I gotta go. So uh... <laughs> War Eagle. I was wait. Yeah, I was supposed to tell you that, Damon, but I got. So geeked up listening to you guys talk about all the cool stuff you do. Um, so before we shut down, because like I said, I wanted to keep you guys for like an hour. Um, Damon, what's the best way for people to track you down, to get in touch with you on social media, anything like that? And and tell people, you know, how to reach you in case they want to buy one of your cool uh, Mandalorian helmets. Uh, just find me on um, any of the socials. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. Damon Juan Kenobi on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and just... Uh, if you can't message me for some reason, just leave a comment and um, I'll get back in touch with you. If you want, if you want to talk helmets or whatever, and I can, I can go through it, how much it costs, what it takes. And if it's not your thing, no problem. No worries. And yeah. is there any, is there any chance you're going to make it over to the Indiana toy and comic expo at the end of August? I know, I know. Probably I no, because we, my daughter's in marching band and school starting. So it's kind of a crazy time of the year. She has her first game. I'm trying to hope, I'm hoping she doesn't have a competition October 1st. I think that's the next great Ohio toy show is October 1st. It is. Um, and I will be in Italy. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So Alfie and, Caroline, <laughs> and my son, Joey are going to be the ones 
they, they're going to be running the uh, rule of the galaxy coverage over there on that. Um, Billy, I, I will, um, I, I will tell you, we are, we're kind of geeked up here. I know I've talked to Alfie about August 28th. I know Joey, like I said, as long as his baby boy doesn't come early, um, Joey and myself and Alfie, and maybe a few other people will be coming down there and starting the day for his birthday for that. Any last comments, best ways for people to track you down, track the showdown or any more information that people need to know uh, about that event coming up on August 28th? Um, August 28th, uh, free parking, $8 at the door, kids 12 and under free. Uh, come to have fun. We have food trucks, costume contests, the whole thing. Two stories, um, full of vendors, artists, creators, um, uh, what else? You can find us on, sorry, you can find us on uh, uh, at any AntoineComicExpo.com. You can search us out on all the social media. You can also look us up under um, ITC Productions, which is our production company. We do any Antoine Comic Expo. We also do Geek Meet Indie in Danville, Indiana. We're going to do that again in March. And then I have my podcast, the uh, Off the Card uh an action figure podcast and yeah you can find me about anywhere and i stand out like a sore thumb i'm like six five so if you, yeah I'll, i will be at toy uh the the that show in october as well i'm coming over for that awesome um, yeah i'll be over for that so well, good we'll, okay. ma we'll make sure we all be, one we're going to try to meet up with you on august 28th and then two whoever of our group and and damon you know let's make sure you guys all interact when you get over to the great ohio toy show in in october on that so roger roger <laughs> <clears throat> yeah my you know i i will i'll be enjoying wine and um pasta and um looking, you know looking for toy shops in italy that you'll be doing <laughs> we don't we don't bring that up out here that's if we just happen to walk past one i mean the, it's just the, the the first rule of toy collecting is what? <laughs> we, don't, we don't talk about it. <laughs> um, well, guys, thank you so much. I, like I said, I wanted to make sure we got you guys on because one, Damon, we've loved interacting with you online and getting a chance to meet you. We, we can't wait to meet up with you again. Um, Billy, we, we wanted to make sure we promoted this show because we think it's a, a good thing. And especially for us being right here in Indiana, we, you know, we want our followers and listeners to come check that out as well. So we'll, we'll make sure we promote anything and everything for both you guys uh, from here on out and hope to meet up with you both real soon. Alfie, thank you for showing up here at the end and, and giving the war Eagle. Cause I know Damon probably loved well, that. <laughs> and, um, and Brent, um, I'm just happy you get to, we get to be on a show together again, cause it's been a while and, and uh, we'll hope your son keeps doing well and you'll keep using that, that bad Wi-Fi at the hospital there with him. So yeah, um, Go ahead. You were going to say something. Oh, no, no. I, just, like, I was, I was doing like, a, oh, it's been bad. Like, <laughs> I can't wait to hear, hear a couple answers. There's at least two or three answers that I want to hear that uh, I definitely did not hear. You got it. Well, we'll make sure we have this out right away. Guys, we'll probably have it out in the next day or so. Uh, so be, be listening for that. And I'll make sure I plug you guys when we, when we uh, put that out there, but to Billy, to Damon, our special guests, thank you guys for being here, for Alfie showing up, uh, for Brent being on the show the whole time. Thank you guys so much. To all of our listeners, again, thank you for being a part of what we do. Uh, chapter 159 of Rule of the Galaxy in the books. Uh, and until next time, may the force be with you. Mm -hmm.